Tactics now on BBC Two in Time Commanders. In the first century BC, Julius Caesar and his legions face off against a ferocious tribal army twice their size. On the line is Caesar's future, his reputation and his military career. Why have we not fired on the people chasing the general? For the Helvetii, a Gallic tribe and Rome's sworn enemy, the stakes are even higher. They're fighting for their very survival. They're coming towards you, Ben. Today, the fate of these two armies lies with a team of headhunters. We're losing quite badly okay. on the left. I think you need to reinforce okay. us. Will their battle tactics and strategy bring fame for Caesar or freedom for the Gauls? This is a battle for survival and for glory. This is Time Commanders. With Eddie Mayer in our 21st Century Battle Command Centre are a team of headhunters from London. Stephen McCarthy, age 34, rank General. Simon Goldsworthy, age 30, rank General. David Herwood, age 34, rank Lieutenant. Ben O'Reilly, age 28, rank Lieutenant. Now you're all headhunters, what does that involve exactly? Basically what we do is we work for big merchant banks and corporates in the city. When they need exceptional people, they come and talk to us. We go out there because we know people in the market. We go and find them for them. And you've all worked together for a long time? Do you all know each other? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ten years. Yeah. Ten years? All good friends? Yep. Mm -hmm. Stephen, you're the boss, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Did you appoint all these people? Yes. You trust them? No. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be a general? That's right. Because you think you're a good leader? That's right, yeah. What does a good leader need to do? talk to the people who are on the floor, understand what the situation is, think about what they're going to do, and then do it. David, you're going to work as a lieutenant. Are you good at taking orders? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I am good at taking orders. Wouldn't you rather be boss? Um, well, we, we are a boss down there, really. You know. Um, uh, no, you're a lieutenant. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, ben, tell us something about your friends that they might not want us to know. Uh, something about my, about my friends. Uh, well, Dave is, uh, is probably the, uh, the ladies' man out of all of us. Dave seems to uh, attract a whole host of women. Simon, you're the only person here who's got a degree in history. Mm -hmm. What's your expertise exactly? Well, I actually did European history, so uh, sort of 20th century. So my expertise is mainly sort of Second World War. I want to introduce you to two people who do know the history. Up there, on the gantry, Dr. Eric Nussbacher and Mike Lodes. Monitoring the team's progress are two military experts. Dr. Eric Nussbacher, Senior Lecturer in War Studies, Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Mike Lodes, Combat and Weapons Historian. Embarrassingly, what they're going to be doing throughout this is watching every move you make and commenting on it. Right at the end of this, whether you win or lose, they will come down and either congratulate you on a battle well fought and won or embarrass you with how badly it went. Now let me give you some information about the battle you're going to fight. It was fought in 58 BC. Julius Caesar leading the Romans against the Gauls. The team will command Caesar's army at the Battle of Bibract. Let's give you some more information on what led up to the battle you're about to fight. The year is 58 BC. The place is Bibract in modern-day Burgundy in France. On one side, the Roman commander Julius Caesar, eager to make military history. On the other side, 60,000 Gallic warriors of the Helvetii tribe, arch enemies of Rome. The Roman Republic controls most of the lands around the Mediterranean, but it's still fighting for control of Gaul. Gaul is occupied by various Celtic tribes who have been battling the Romans for nearly three centuries. Now Rome has gained the upper hand, but not without suffering some humiliating defeats. 
50 years earlier, the Gauls had destroyed a huge Roman army in a brutal battle in southern France. They developed a fierce reputation for their tactics of an all-out infantry charge at the start of battle in an attempt to break the enemy lines. The Gauls were courageous and formidable as individual warriors, but as an army, they lacked discipline. Their equipment was also very different. While the warrior elite were trained and well-armed, very few of the ordinary tribesmen wore helmets or body armor. Now, 50 years later, the stage is set for a rematch. Julius Caesar is the governor of Gaul. Caesar also leads a revamped Roman army. His soldiers are professional and more effective than the old militia army, which had fought the Gauls in the past. His most important tactical unit is the legionary cohort, each composed of 480 heavy infantry. Small, disciplined and agile, the cohorts can respond quickly in battle and are able to fight on more than one front simultaneously, giving them a big advantage over less disciplined enemy troops. Caesar is keen to fight the Gauls, knowing that military success is a proven path to political power and personal gain in Rome. When Caesar hears that a Gallic tribe with the Helvetii is on the move towards the Roman province of Western Gaul, he sends immediate instructions to muster the Roman army. The Helvetii, led by tribal chieftains, are on a mass migration in search of a safe haven to settle. In order to avoid their old enemy Rome, the tribe skirts round to the north of Caesar's province. Caesar follows, biding time until the right moment for battle, he harasses the tribe for weeks. When Caesar makes a detour for supplies, the Helvetii interpret his retreat as a sign of weakness they decide to force a fight. The two armies meet near the town of Bibract. The Helvetii outnumber the Romans two to one and believe they have the advantage. The Roman army fears the Gallic warriors, but Caesar is hungry for glory. One man's ambition is pitted against a tribe fighting for its very existence. If Caesar wins, he will ensure his military reputation and political prospects. If the Helvetii win, they will assure the survival of their tribe and will be free to move to safety. The stakes are high, battle is imminent. So that's all there is to it. You just have to defeat 60,000 Helvetii. How useful was that briefing? I know you've all been taking careful notes. What did you learn there? And we found that we're very disciplined, um, they're not, we're very agile, they tend to just run around, we, we have to they don't wear any helmets and we've got archers. Yeah, we're going to have to be careful that our troops are going to be slightly nervous, particularly if they kick off with a very fierce infantry charge to start off. How difficult a battle is it going to be, do you think? War's never easy. <laughs> um, Would you go as far as to say it's hell? <laughs> uh, we're not, not yet, not yet, yeah. we might say that later. The team now have 15 minutes to gather as much information as they can about both armies and come up with a strategy to defeat the Helvetii. You can look at the battlefield on the big plasma screen up here. Back here, you can control the view of the screen, get the overview, swoop down, have a look at your troops. You'll be able to get much more information which yep. you will need to fight the battle. Have a look at this map and get, get the lay of the land. The battlefield is a wide plain with the Helvetii gathered on the far side. The Romans are mustered in a small valley surrounded by high ground and woods. This will be the battlefield. Okay, so what right, can you tell about it right away? There's a small hill here. Yeah, I mean, that's this is a slope. Yeah. It's not particularly steep. Do we actually know the, the dimension? This is critical. Are they going to identify that hill as a really important place to hold and defend? That's 
it's just a huge great plateau there. You no, know, it's a slope, and that's the, that's the crep, that's the top of the hill there. So basically, we've got yeah, two, we've got two two hills. That's a, a small, a small relatively elevation. steep elevation. We've got a flat part there, and then we've got a a, 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 a shallow part. slope up to the top of this hill here. What yeah. might you do with that limited information you have already? It's it's easy to fight going downhill. It's easy to run yeah. downhill, especially if we've got heavy armour. Yeah. Mm. All right. For a more detailed view of the troops, the generals need to send down your two lieutenants. Each computer will co control a different part of your army. Mm -hmm. Find out about them, where they are, what they're capable of, and then let's regroup back here in a few minutes and see what information you've got. All right? Okay. In their first task as lieutenants, David and Ben must gather intelligence on their own army. They face a force twice their size, so effective deployment of the Roman units is essential. To do this, the team will need to find out everything they can about their troops' strengths and weaknesses. Is that a, is that a typical cavalry setup? That's down there. What it is? Uh, Eagle, eager, fresh. Okay. Okay. So we've got everyone. Can you tell me more about? Um, That's fine. We can we can now see on the big screen here exactly what we've got, how they're lined up. It's vital that Stephen gets the exact layout of the troops that he and David will control. Okay, Dave, what have you got? I've got uh, general out front. Okay. Uh, nine guards. Um, I have. Do, 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 seven battalions of infantrymen. Infantry. Caesar has got four regular legions uh, that he can rely on as professional soldiers. These are going to be very organized, disciplined, subordinate soldiers who will do what Caesar tells them to do. Um, I have, you see in the middle, the yellow middle? What are they? They're, they're slingers. It's, it's, it's an interesting factor of the Roman army that they would use these, these different types of troops gleaned from different parts of the empire. So slingers from um, the Balearica Islands, famed for it. And, and right up until the Spanish Civil War, they, they were using slings to, to throw hand grenades. The rest of the Roman troops are under the command of Simon and Ben. Uh, ben, these are your guys. We've got a general in the front. Yep. OK. And then we've got... Uh, two rows of heavy infantry. Yeah. And yeah, behind them... Stop. That's the cavalry. OK, then we've got cavalry behind. How many cavalry have you got? Two? One either side? Well, cavalry on either side, yeah. OK. And behind them? And then behind them we've got see the little the thin line of the light infantry. infantry. Light infantry. Auxiliary, they're quite quick. And then back left. So there. Is that two light we've infantry? We've got the Gallic auxiliary cavalry. If the Romans want a good cavalryman, they've got to go out and rent them. And in this case, Caesar has rented himself some cavalry from local Gallic tribes. And the problem is that their leader is tied by marriage to the Helvetii, and he can't rely on his Gallic cavalry the way he can rely on his Roman infantry. OK, that's brilliant. So Dave's army is a lot more powerful than OK, we've got all the heavy infantry on the, on the right, on, on Dave's side, and we've got a lot of the light infantry and the cavalry on, on Ben's side. OK, if you find out about your own troops, you're happy? Yeah. Yep. OK, come back up to the table and let's discuss what you've got. How useful was that? And, that was and are you happy you've plotted it uh, pretty accurately here? No, I'm not. I, I think it's very useful in terms of we now know what we've got in terms of numbers and, and disposition, where we are not 100% on exactly where on the field they are. Yeah, if you look to the left, you can see the hills going out that way. All right, now where you are. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to give you some extra help. OK. Give you some information about key troops, which, again, you can use to help fight the battle. Have a look at your legionaries. Roman legionaries. Disciplined, vulnerable on the flanks unless formation is maintained, fight in small cohort units. We've just got to focus on the weakness of those guys, which is the flank flanks are vulnerable, well, so we've got to protect their flanks. Yeah. Our legionary is all heavy infantry. You can work it out. Use the information you have, use the technology to work out who's who. OK. Actually, that looks like our guys down there. If you can zoom in the ones we're right above now. So these are, all the he these are all, all our heavy infantry that are at the back. Okay, that's heavy, so heavy, heavy, heavy. Okay, so these guys and these guys. So they're faces. Down All right. Up. Yep. Cool. Okay, that's useful. Uh, yeah. Let's have a look at the auxiliary cavalry, which will also be helpful to you. Auxiliary cavalry, battle seasoned, poor against frontline infantry, armed with close range spear, skilled in all types of terrain. So we need to use them to flank. 
Yes, we, we, we want to get them out of the way. Thankfully, they're behind. But when, when the Gauls, who I reckon are going to come in, remember they said they do the big charge? Yeah. We don't want these guys in the way. We want them coming in from the flanks, all right? Okay. Because they're skilled at all times to drag. We can actually use them up on the hills yeah, to come down. Yeah, elevate, elevate. And okay. they won't get tired. The team's army consists of heavy and light infantry, cavalry, archers, and slingers. But in order to use their small Roman army effectively, they need to get as much information as possible about the Helvetii. You know a fair amount about your own troops now. Let's find out about the enemy. David, you're particularly keen to okay. know. I'll go down. Go down to your technician. Learn what you can. I will do my best. And shout back to your colleagues. Generals, feel free to use the screen. David's mission is to find out the exact disposition of the Gallic army. But with their future at stake, the Helvetii are taking no chances. Away from their main army, hidden in the forest, are multiple units of crack troops from the Boii and Tulingi tribes. If David misses this ambush force, the entire Roman army could be seriously compromised. There's three, three, sort of, three battalions of Gauls on foot uh, at the front. Okay. Right, hang on okay. one second. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. So we're looking at like that. Okay. So that's the, one, that's two, the general, three. then line, then further line. Okay, so but these guys are all like, right, so they're running the old Christmas way. tree. We go forward. And then they've got one, two, three, four, we five flats across the back. David focuses on the main Helvetii army. Too wrapped up in counting enemy units to do a thorough search of the battlefield, he wastes the chance to look for hidden troops. There are uh, Gallic skirmishers, uh, idle. Can we go back? Right. This one here. Yeah, one minute. Okay. One minute. Dave, quickly, mate. We're out of time. Okay. Okay. Um, so the three we've got, got there. Then we got the then we got the big flat line of infantry. Yeah, big flat line. We've got. Do we know about uh, them. Gallic infantry. There are eight battalions across. Can you just go to the right. Here we've got the Gauls, and we can see one of the things about them is they're big. These are big guys, and it was one of the things that the Romans were really quite intimidated by the Gauls, um, and they emphasised this, but they put chalk in their hair, like punk rockers, spiking it up. Um, it makes them bigger. It's like the packles on a dog's back, raising up in anger. And with the woad, the blue woad, drains the colour from their faces. So the psychological warfare is immense. These are big, terrifying men who look extremely fierce. Who's this here, David? We're, just, we're on now. Is this I'm not going to give you much longer. All right, Dave, who's that? Where? See the one right, right in front of us, mate? This one here? Yeah. yeah. Can you go down okay, the cover right in front of us front. so you can see what They're, they look I've like? Already, I've already talked about those three. All right. If their command structure disintegrates, the group dynamic is going to win or lose this. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in section. Do they have any cavalry? Uh, I'm looking. These guys look like. Oh, uh, they're all. All right, general. There's that's an auxiliary cavalry of nine. That's it. You've had okay. all the time you're going to get to look at the enemy. Cavalry from nine. Okay. All right. Okay. So where are we going to put the cavalry? Detailed scouting is proving to be the team's weakness. They've missed most of the enemy cavalry, and they failed to find the Helvetii ambush troops. All right, gentlemen, you've got the lay of the land. You find out about your own troops. You've had a little scout to see what the enemy's up to. Now the most important part. This is where the battle could be won and lost with what you decide to do for your strategy, how you're going to fight the battle. There's two key points from the point of view of our own troops. One is that our legionnaires are good frontally, but not on the flanks. And the second is vice versa. Our cavalry are not good at head-on charges and are good at the flanks. So it's obvious that you know clear that we put the infantry in the centre and the cavalry on the flank. We trapped. want to catch them here because this this is elevated as well. So if we can oh. get them from from the top, they'll be having to fight up on both sides. Pincer movement. And yeah, I reckon we're gonna be back yeah. in. Uh, if, we, if we had a choice, if we put if we put troops here and troops here, and so you know, trap them in there and slaughter them mercilessly. Yeah. They're talking about controlling ground, which is interesting. This is not a fight where any ground matters except for the hill and the open space at the bottom of it. If they start tying themselves to ground, if they start trying to control the ground, rather than fighting the enemy, they could find themselves fighting the wrong battle. Uh, what we want to do is, is, is let them pull them in and have our guys up here. We also know, obviously, that the fact that we, you know, our legionnaires are vulnerable from the, from, from the flanks, etc. I think they're way too concerned about their flanks because a cohort can turn and guard its flanks far more easily than the line, the thin red line. This is no thin red line. It isn't a big problem of getting flanked for these guys. That's one of the reasons 
the Romans could get away with having such weak cavalry, having to rent it from, from Gauls and Germans. Having decided to, to meet them here, if they're advancing from there, we've, we've heard that their the discipline isn't the best. <coughs> and if, if their discipline isn't the best, it's likely they're going to get strung out between there and there, mm -hmm. which basically means that hopefully they'll arrive in dribs and drabs and we can just annihilate them yeah, as we go. Unlike most Gauls, the Helvetii are not an undisciplined mob. The Helvetii are not just going to rush out, seek single combat, and try to overpower the Romans with sheer testosterone. The Helvetii are organized, they have subordinate infantry, and their cavalry are not nearly as wild and not nearly as uncontrollable as other Gallic tribes. They've got far more numbers than us, so we've got to be really smart with the sort of the troops that we actually have. We know that our strongest troops are at the back here, we know we've got archers here, and that all these guys are very mobile. So I think what our plan is, is it's that we're going, to, yeah, we're going to use the land to our advantage, because if we can get them into a smaller funnel, then it doesn't matter how many people they've got, they're going to have to fight us on a, on a smaller front. We're going to have to watch our flank in case they come around the outside, but there's so much empty space, we're going to have a bit of time to see what they do when they're coming towards us. Of course, you've got the latest technology, which uh, Julius Caesar didn't, You've got a sort of advantage. Are you confident you two really are the generals? You're going to be able to conduct and control this battle and that you two are going to be able to take orders and do as you're told? We will up to a point. If, I, if I'm given an order and I'm going to lead my men into a bloodbath, then I'm not going to do it. I think okay, we know. five minutes to mutiny then. Yes, that's, uh, we all know what we're going to do. We've, we've got a plan. I think that's the most important thing. And you're all we've, agreed on it? We're all agreed on it, yeah. yeah. And even if you're not, you two are in charge? Yep. Yeah. We have consensus, but at the same time, buck stops here. All right, I hope you've used your planning time wisely. You've gathered as much information as you're going to get. Now is the time when battle's going to start. Deploy your troops. OK. The team's battle plan is to divide their army into heavy units in the valley with their light infantry on the hill using the terrain to neutralize the much larger Helvetii force. David, the lieutenant, will deploy the disciplined legionaries under the command of Stephen. Simon and Ben control the more mobile units, cavalry, archers, and a single unit of heavy infantry. This is the period when the Romans imposed unity of command, whereas our team here has got duality of command. Absolutely. The team prepare to deploy their army. With the Roman force the only barrier between the Helvetii and freedom, they can expect a brutal fight. Okay. Their concept seems to be fighting a fundamentally defensive battle. They want to hold that ground rather than taking the fight to the Helvetii. So it's really going to be up to their skirmishers to bring the Helvetii. And that's the whole point. The whole point of the archers and the slingers and the, and, and, and the javelin men is to get out there and provoke that Gallic wrath, make them right. really come on boys and really b bring the charge on. Simon and Ben deploy their men up to the hill. The task of this lighter force is to protect the flanks of the units in the valley against enemy attack. The Helvetii may not be as organized as the Romans but they are a deadly force nonetheless. And with the very survival of the tribe at stake they're relying heavily on their cavalry and infantry ambush from the woods. Deployment of the Roman army is proving tricky for the team. Ben's having difficulty following orders. Is that, is that four of them? Oh, that was the cavalry we sent up, sorry. So one there. Do you want the cavalry up there as well? Uh, I, I will eventually, yeah. So you might as well just leave them up there. All right, leave them up there. Now, the heavy infantry? Heavy infantry, as we said, four. Okay. All right. Do we want the heavy infantry in front of the cavalry? Sling us by the archers. Yes. Yeah. No, we want the heavy infantry there, and we want the cavalry to the left okay, and the right. Heavy infantry like this. You understand what I'm saying? Ben? Yeah. Basically, if we, if we have the... Um, infantry like that, and the cavalry on each side. cohorts of infantry there, and then we want to have cavalry on the left-hand side and cavalry yeah. on the right-hand okay. side. Cool. Sure. Cool. Right, so basically, our heavy infantry, we're on the hill, in four lines. Yep. We do that. David and Stephen keep their heavy infantry units in the valley, but start moving them forward and into a deep line. To the okay. trees, yeah. we want to try and make a crescent in From front one. of all our heavy infantry at the back. The team are preparing to fight a defensive battle. 
with an enemy force twice their size, the strategy appears sound. But they have no plan to deal with an enemy ambush. David, your horses as well. Can you pull them off to the side? Or these? The, yeah, the ones in the middle. Pull uh, them off to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the general. Keeping the general over. Uh, you here. might want to put him behind all the troops and if he's yeah, the general. Put him, put him over here. Over here. You're the general. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm the general, so put us behind the troops. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be behind the good ones. Caesar, who was a great horseman himself, actually dismounted the raptor. Mm. He actually got off his horse before the battle to say, I'm not going to run away from this. I am staying, and I am either going to win or die here. And he sent his horse to the rear, and the horses of all his commanders, so they couldn't leave the field. Okay, now I've still got two battalions over here. Okay, bring them forward into a line, and we want to try and crescent these, because they're, they're vulnerable on the flanks. Focusing so intensely on their troop deployment, the team take their eyes off the Helvetii. A dangerous move with battle pending, and an enemy so desperate to fight. Okay. Okay. The enemy is so can we... The enemy is not moving at the moment. How do you Actually, know? Can you can't spin see around? So can you we spin around and have a quick look at the enemy? And see what's happening. Stephen makes an alarming discovery. Okay. Guys, they're on the move. It looks like they're moving these two further forward. The entire Helvetii army is on the march and quickly closing ground. Battle is now only moments away. The team have divided their army into two, one side of heavy infantry, the other light units, in order to protect the flanks of the main force in the valley. They've gambled on the tribe not wanting to fight uphill, but with the Helvetii on the offensive, the team will have to fight the battle wherever the Gauls choose to attack. Okay, forward. You know so the enemy's Simon. coming, son. Oh, I haven't noticed that, no. They're on the way. Right. Ben, we need to move quite quickly because yeah, the enemy's actually on its way. Oh, right. okay. As the Helvetii chieftains rally their men for the battle charge, the team struggle to prepare. We need to have a look at what they're seeing because there's some of our troops who are exposed. Adam, so give, give, us, give us a around. ghoul's eye view, mate. This is what these guys are going to see when they're, when they're attacking. Right. They're going to see all of us up on the hills here. This is really using the modern technology to its maximum benefit. He's really latched onto the fact that he can get an enemy's eye view of what he can see, so he can see his strengths and weaknesses from the enemy's perspective. It's very good thinking. Guys, these are the ones, these are the guys who are coming towards us. Spin these around. are your enemies, guys. Yeah. All right, spin around. Wait till their eyes. They're lightly armed troops. This means that the Gauls can, can go in at the run, really double time. So they're very good at impact charges. The Romans have a continuous feeling of inadequacy compared to the Gauls. Romans are shorter than Gauls. The Gauls are, are big men and they are physically strong. And the Romans feel like these great big fierce men are, are perhaps better one-to-one -one than they are. They're moving in, in loose formation. Loose formation. And pushing. And when you see those numbers, it, it's an intimidating sight. That mass coming at you. The Romans seek to compensate by uh, having order and discipline and subordination. The heavy infantry in the valley has deployed in a crescent, the strongest formation against a large and unruly enemy. The units on the hill are dispersed along the slope. But sending light troops so far away from the main body of the army could be a tactical error. The hillside units are too weak to defend themselves and too far away to be reinforced. They have defended the hill a bit more now. So as they've deployed, there's a lot more covering of the hill, but they're now, again, I think they've, they've underestimated the size of this battlefield. The team have also underestimated their enemy. They still don't know that the Helvetii have infantry and cavalry in the woods. As the enemy approaches, the team square up for a frontal assault. But the Helvetii head for the hill and the weaker of the two Roman sides. The skirmishers, the team's archers and slingers, are positioned too far away to be used effectively and are wasted. They haven't really latched onto the significance of what each troops do. Slingers can really disrupt a cavalry charge if, it, if, it, if it's coming down. Well, they're, they're not just chucking stones either, these slingers. Mm. No, no, they're not. I mean, they, they, it's a lead shot. I mean, and, and, and it really gets a velocity. I mean, it could absolutely penetrate horse flesh. I mean, these are weapons. Okay, the enemy are about to engage us here. Can you stop? Can you stop? And, and scroll in on the enemy who are running, rushing towards us here. They're coming towards you, Ben. 
generals, do we want to attack from the line infantry? Okay, Ben, you're going to wait. You're going to wait until they're about 50 yards away, and then yep. you're going to advance the heavy infantry straight at them. Right. And at the same time, you're going to move the cavalry okay. and the light infantry and attack them on the side. Okay, we're going to move there, and then the cavalry are going to come in from each side. The Helvetii launch their attack with spears, but hold back from a full infantry charge. Run infantry and okay. attack these guys here. Rome takes the bait and charges, but the Helvetii don't engage. Instead, they turn and run. Okay, that looks good. Okay, keep going, keep going. They're running away, they're running away. Okay, send the cavalry in. The team make their first mistake. They've played to Helvetii tactics. But look here, the Gauls have engaged the Romans. The Gauls are, are drawing the Roman skirmishers down the hill. The Romans, instead of drawing the Gauls into combat on their turn... It's back to front to what it should be. That's right. The team's own skirmishers are being pulled away from them. The Helvetii are drawing the Romans off the hill and towards serious danger. The advantage of high ground is critical if the team are to stand a chance against such a large army. Okay, Ben, all okay. your guys need to go to the... Okay, they're running away, but can we pull back? Yeah, we need to see where their other troops are. Bring the archers are. forward. Okay, there's, there's, there's three archers forward. Guys, one second. No, hold on, hold on. We're advancing hold here on the, on the okay. far left. Can you so spin around? Can you spin around? We'd like to see what's, where they're going. Don't run after them, guys. No, Don't run no, after them. We're losing all the, no, all the tactical... I suspect that these Gauls were recalled rather than repulsed. Oh, I'm sure that those Gallic skirmishers have quite calculatedly pulled the Roman skirmishers forward. And well, you have to tell us what we're doing. Okay, okay. You know, yeah, pull, can, can we pull away back and down and, and back off a bit so we can see everything that's going on? And to the left a bit, left a bit. Okay, Ben, you pull your guys out. They're pull being my guys back now. Okay, right, pull ben. more back. Pull more back yeah. up the hill. Stephen sees the danger and immediately usurps control of forces on the hill. Recognizing the Helvetii trap, he orders the troops to retreat. But it may be too late. The Roman cavalry have already taken heavy losses and the Roman infantry are out of formation. Now they've figured it out. The team have figured out that their skirmishers were being drawn away and they've pulled their skirmishers back. Okay. Now you can see on screen back in. Back in. how your losses are doing, the percentage losses. Back in. Okay, so far, the numbers reveal that both sides have taken losses, but the casualties are still fairly evenly matched. Okay. Mike, on the bottom left, they're pulling back. There. No, on your right. Yeah. Uh, guys, I've got people coming in from the. I've got people coming in from my right flank. Suddenly, the Helvetii cavalry ambush is sprung. The team leap into action. Pull back. Pull back. Pull back. Okay, pan to the right. Do you want me to pull back? Pull, no, no, just keep where you are. Keep where you are. Uh, your formation is good. Your formation is good. There comes, there comes a load over from this side. Three units of Helvetii cavalry charge out from the ambush site and storm towards the Roman positions. In their rush to defend against the surprise attack, the team fail to notice that more enemy troops still lie in wait in the woods. Stephen, are you seeing the whole picture? Are you using all your men effectively? Yeah, I, I've got all my guys are just holding there. David, pull them in and around, pull them in and around. Expecting the cavalry to attack his troops in the valley, Stephen repositions his men on the right flank. But the ambushing cavalry bypass the main Roman force and unleash a ferocious charge against the team's hilltop troops. The light Roman force is not up to the assault. Outnumbered and outmaneuvered, the side buckles under the attack. The archers should be continuously shooting. They've left their uh, missiles out of the battle. Their archers... Yeah, they haven't used their archers at all. their are, are yeah. too far away mm. to do the job they should be doing. And that was an error in the planning stage. They, they, they should have worked out the ranges of these weapons and worked out where to deploy them accordingly. They, had, they held them far too far back. Mate, if the archer's having a tea break, can we, uh, can we pull we out again? on the job? While Simon struggles to control his troops, his archers and slingers are run down by Helvetii cavalry. David. The whole problem is I can't see anything on the screen. David. All you need to worry about is what is on that computer screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay.
Yep. You slowly move your spot. I just sent in the cavalry to fight these guys again. Ben sort of doing his own thing now. I think he sort of just got drawn into his, what's happening on his screen. And... Tactical errors made in the planning stage are now having serious consequences. Simon's units on the hill are too far away from the main body of Roman heavy infantry to be supported. And sloppy scouting of the enemy means that unknown to the team, a second wave of Helvetii ambush troops is still waiting to attack. Right, Ben, what I need, I need you to tell me, front to back, exactly what is happening on the left-hand side. Right, so we've got a general here, OK? Moving down the hill, I've got some light infantry. Right, OK. What, one, one, one cohort? Yeah. They've got one legion out twisting in the breeze. It can't be supported by the other legions, and that's a mistake. With more than half his force destroyed, Simon blames enemy numbers rather than the team's tactics. Basically, I think we're just being outnumbered. It seems They're like blaming enemy. the numbers. Julius Caesar always wins in spite of numbers. Because it's this professional army, they have a drill, they have a formation, provided that they hold that formation and mutually support, then they can take on bigger numbers. With half the Roman army reeling from the impact of a Helvetii ambush, Stephen recognises the danger of a further surprise attack. He scouts round for more enemy troops. Could you shoot through those trees and make sure we haven't got anyone coming in behind us? Into the distance. Further forward and to the right. OK, further forward. OK, OK. Now we've got to keep going. We didn't see okay. this. No. Uh, OK, we've got loads of people in the forest here. Keep going. He finds the Helvetii infantry, the second wave of the ambush, approaching his flank. Now, hordes of close-quarter combat troops from two allied tribes are heading for the Romans. That is the Tulingi and the Boii, off on the extreme right. Yeah. Coming out of the woods here. Yeah. Dave, these are the ones coming towards you. There's loads of them in the trees. If you can keep going. OK, they're all over there. Keep going. You weren't expecting that, were you? No, we weren't. The team now need to move quickly to reposition their army against the attack. What are you going to change from the way you were doing it before? What we're going to do is we've got the big group of people over here. At the moment, our troops are a bit like this. So we're going to pull them back into this sort of line, tighten them up with one set behind who are just going to sweep behind if we see any break in the, uh, break in the line. As the troops in the valley prepare to engage, the Roman force on the hill is losing scores of men but the battle may still not be in vain. These Roman units are serving two important tasks. They're pinning down the main Helvetii army and taking out a large number of Gauls as they go. They haven't managed to draw Helvetii in close to their main body. That's got to be their main task right now. But because the Tulingi and the Boii have come late to the party, off on the Roman right flank, the team will be tempted to turn away from the main Helvetian army to face this new threat. As the ambush pours out of the forest, Stephen sends three cohorts to meet the approaching troops and keeps the rest of his men facing the hill battle. We need to pull everything together in a line. Yeah, but Stephen's on top of it. He's identified it, he's trying to pull them together, but I just think he's left it too late. The three Roman units prepare to take the full impact of the fierce Gallic onslaught. To have any chance of surviving this terrifying attack, it's crucial that the cohorts maintain formation. For the first time, both halves of the Roman army are engaged. Despite the initial impact of the Helvetii ambush, the cohorts managed to keep formation. It's under good control that Stephen and David are working well with each other, working slightly less well with Simon and Ben. Close them up. Ben, close them up. Fresh, the fresh, the fresh guys infantry. are fighting on the left now. I've sent them to fight on the left. Right, good. Can we send the fresh heavy infantry to fight on the right? Uh, they're, just, they're currently engaged in left, mate, because the cavalry ran away, which is our last order. So they're having trouble sorting out the big picture, the overall tactical situation, from the little picture. And the generals and the lieutenants are not communicating enough for any one person to have a clear picture of the battlefield. 
Mate, I've got no idea what's going on. I've, I've, I've had, I've had three overhead. white flags, mate. And you're not telling me anything. Uh, ben, talk to me, mate. Your other I, general I doesn't know what's going on. I can't see anything, mate. It's, it's all just swooping around. Okay. I need an overshot from you guys to tell me Adam, what you've can got. Adam, we go behind our army to the left and give me an overview? You're doing really well. Guys, I'm getting dicked on over here. Okay, you take the overhead because we're, we're in control over here. Right. Okay. Remember, if you're not happy with the shot, the eyes on the eager archers, yeah? Just pan a tiny bit left, Adam. Oh, that's much better. Right, Ben, t tell me what we're winning and what we're losing, where, where we need room for We're losing everything at the moment. However, the Romans on the hill, unable to regain formation, are fighting a losing battle, but still forcing heavy casualties on the Helvetii. They've spread themselves much too thinly. They have. They're not mutually supportive. Right. Exactly. For a smaller force, they've spread themselves too thinly, I think. Right. They had to concentrate their strength. Yeah, and they didn't. And they, well, really, that whole flank has disintegrated. Yeah. Yeah, he's in a mess, isn't he? They're in a mess. Oh, do we have anyone that's fresh that we can re Only reinforce with? Only the general is fresh. Now, the only effective troops from the hill battle are a unit of general's guards and a handful of heavy foot. We're losing quite badly okay. on the left. I think you need to reinforce okay. us, otherwise okay. we're, we're going to lose back? our whole okay. left bank. Back, back, back. With his few okay. remaining troops seriously compromised and the command structure in disarray, the lieutenants yeah. are crying out yeah. for orders. Okay, David. Uh, yeah, turn to... face. Simon makes a desperate final plea to save his men on the hill. Steve, we've got to reinforce Sling on the left flank. Slingshots, okay. over, over. Wait, otherwise we're going to lose the whole of that side of our army. We're okay. getting absolutely murdered just because there's more of them. Why didn't you pull them out? Despite an urgent appeal from his fellow general, Stephen is too busy fighting the ambush troops to commit any men. His decision dooms the Roman soldiers on the hill to certain slaughter. Most of our guys have run away terrified. Okay, I don't care. All the ones that haven't run away terrified, can we pull them back up the hill and okay, regroup? So can we pull the 10 infantry left who are not running away back up the hill? Yes, precisely. The few surviving troops on the hill flee with the Helvetii in hot pursuit. But Ben won't give up and fights to the last. Why have we not fired on the people chasing the general? Lieutenant, okay, so you're getting David, the orders David, you need. David, forget them. He's all dead. Can, you like ben, can you send the general to his death? Because he's going to get hung he's anyway when he gets back to Rome. With the Roman general chased from the field, the hill battle is finally lost. This is a decisive moment. Now that they've finished off one half of the Roman army, the Helvetii infantry and cavalry, although tired and greatly reduced in number, can regroup and join the battle in the valley. The Roman infantry now prepare to face a new threat. And the Roman right, a long way away, is intact and capable of doing what they really need to do, which is slaughter the Helvetii. Look at the big screen, David. Yep. Big screen, those guys in front, put them in that hole. Right. Plug that hole. These guys, Can you zoom yeah, yeah. forward? Plug the hole here. Yep. That's it, plug that hole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Line your guys up wider. Okay. I'm no expert, but it's going badly, isn't it's it? It's going very badly. Why is it going so badly? Where was your plan? I think, to be honest, we just had, we had a lot of our strength. All our heavy infantry is over here, and that's why they're doing okay. And over here, it's cavalry, light infantry, and one heavy infantry division. But you're good fighters. You're better fighters mm. than they are. Why are you losing? We're not holding our position. And, Those and at guys, the moment, yeah. we're fighting two battles when we yeah. should be fighting one. The generals realized that splitting their army was a tactical error. As more Helvetii head towards them, will a revised battle plan be enough to save the remaining Roman force? If you actually look at where their troops are, their troops have now pretty much over around here, yeah. and they're all up here. So what we need to do is just pull around into a square, we need to defend the area, let them rush at us. David, if you want to square them up, because they're coming at us again. Here comes the Gallic cavalry. A uh, mass. The, the whooping wild men. David, your infantry, infantry, send them all forward into that gap. Plug that gap. They're coming around the back, they're coming around the back. Straight forward, block that hole. That's it, push them forward now. Push them right forward, right forward. Waves of Helvetii infantry and cavalry newly arrived from the hill battle charge towards the Roman line. Now we can see, once again, a Roman legion doing what it does best, which is sticking Holding together. Ground. They would get down on one knee, clamp their shields in, put their spears out. Clearly they're not going to run away, they're fixed. And they're saying, we are Romans and we are staying. Can you take us? 
and I, I absolutely see that they've, 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 they've clamped down. The Gauls are armed with much longer swords than the Romans. And if the Romans aren't careful, if they let the Gauls get in close, in large numbers, the Gauls can come right up to the Roman shields, use the Romans' shields against them, and use their longer swords to advantage over the tops of the Roman shields. And as a culture, the Gauls and the Helvetii, in, in, in particular, that, that Latin area, um, were, were absolutely the pioneers of Iron Age technology. They're not some lesser tribe compared to the Romans. They're just a different military culture. That's right. But they and did have good quality weapons. They just didn't choose to wear a lot of armor. Do we pull back and yeah. slightly to the right? Yeah. I think we do, okay. Uh, can you go further to the right, further to the right, further to the right? David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David, yeah. you see you've got these two people here. There's nothing there. Two Hold on a second. The units on the far side of the battlefield have managed to defeat the Helvetii ambush. Tired but intact, they rush to reinforce the main Roman line. Guys, bring these round, this way. Yeah, come round. Okay, There's guys bring coming towards these you. Two, these, two up, these two up there. Can we start bringing them round? The enemy horse regroup and head for the far end of the Roman line, attempting to outflank the infantry. The battle-weary cohort arrives just in time to meet the ferocious Helvetii attack and rout the attempted flanking maneuver. The assault is brutal, but the cohorts hold their formation. The more the cavalry are coming around here, the more it's actually changing shape to, right. to, to go with them. It, it's, it's a very flexible... A cohort legion is very flexible. It can change to accommodate cavalry action. It can change to accommodate the ground. It's frustrating every attempt to flank them here. The team have kept two units in reserve, one each of heavy and light infantry. It was a tactical gamble but it could now pay off. Still heavily outnumbered by the Helvetii, David deploys the heavy foot to reinforce the front line. The two yep. blocks to the right, yep. can you swing them around? Over to the top or bottom? Top. They're running at us now. Okay, so we need to get these up Okay. Here. So the Helvetii are concentrating against the Romans. Yes, take them out one at a time. One at a time. And the Romans are now desperately By trying... the time this lot get there, it's probably going to be too late. That's right. The Romans that's are... the race. That is the race. Will the team be able to get that legion up to reinforce? This is all about battlefield mobility now. That's it. David, can you look at the big screen? Okay. Yeah. Go to the far right hand side. Yeah. Yeah, those guys do nothing. These guys here. Yeah, and, and turn push, around and plug that forward. hole. Left wheel and charge. Yeah, push them forward now. Fantastic, okay. we're doing well. We just need to block that gap. With more Helvetii hitting the front line, Stephen calls on his last reserves, a group of light infantry. But can he get them into place before the Helvetii break the Roman formation? Those reserves that they kept back, they're now bringing them in and into a concentrated uh, force that are supporting. So they, I think they're... Yes. And they've got lots of intact legions. And yeah, th there you go. Look, fresh intact troops. They're coming into support now. They're going, they're going to rout the Helvetii within moments, I think. As long as the Helvetii don't have an intact body. And here we can see formed bodies of Helvetii now coming in to attack the Romans as they're reforming their position. Huge number of reserves. OK, so we're just going to have to think about this. OK. OK. So we're still doing okay. We've got better. We've got a better percentage than they have. Okay. So as long as we can hold these yeah. lines, Bend we're going to be okay. Can you pull in? Can you focus in on that little battle to the right? Okay, go. I think we've just been just killed been there. Beaten, so uh, we need right, to turn and face. Right. Turn and face. The guys coming behind turn and you. Face. Yeah, turn and face those okay. guys. We're still ahead of this guys. We're still doing okay. We're still doing okay. Right, can we wheel? Okay, okay. David, you, guys. David, you see the guys bottom. in the front? Right there. Yeah, bottom. Can you wheel them slightly to the right? As the Helvetii lose more and more men, their tactics become increasingly desperate. Their cavalry regroup for another attempt to break Roman formation. And on the far side, an infantry unit throws itself against the Roman line. This is the critical moment of the battle. I don't think they know it, but this is the critical moment of the battle. Absolutely. 
The team have got to be prepared. They've got to be in formation. They're about to get hit by all the remaining Helvetii. The Helvetii have got nothing to lose at this point. Absolutely. The Romans must concentrate their forces now. The Romans proved too determined for the Gauls. Both the cavalry and infantry charges failed to break through the sturdy Roman line. Push them all in together. We're just in a big pitch battle. Can you focus in ben, on that battle? Can we... Straight ahead. In a battle of numbers against discipline, the Roman army is prevailing. The team has turned the battle. David, these guys at the front are doing really well. If you can try and move them forward to join up with those other guys, so move them up the screen, vertically up the screen. We're hacking through these guys, we're doing really well. Look, they're, they're really down on their numbers. In terms of percentage fatalities, um, the Gauls are losing a lot, of, a lot of brave men. Unable to penetrate the Roman line, and with their numbers dwindling, the Helvetii war machine is breaking up. They're running away. Who's running away? They they're are. Running away, yeah. They're running okay, away. we're still ahead of these guys. Um, can you focus in? Can see what's going okay, on? guys, we got it. Okay, okay, might be okay I think we're going to win. They're running away. With the bulk of the Roman force still steady and intact, the remaining Helvetii flee the battle. Oh, oh, on this battle right. here, to the right hand okay, side. Focus in. Focus in. Yeah. Going further. Going further. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> you are victorious. Well, I knew they'd be pleased. Yeah. <laughs> So, how on earth did that happen? Um, okay, basically, I think most of the credit there should go to the right-hand side of the army, so Stephen Babe. Yeah, we manoeuvred them pretty well, yeah. I think. I, mean, I think it was, you know, clear, uh, concise communication. Uh, we kind of had an idea as to where we were, where we wanted, wanted to be manoeuvred. I think we got. Um, I mean, we probably did have an element of luck, but we had our strongest guys, and we had them positioned. We didn't move them. Stephen, there was a terrible moment not long before the end when it looked pretty bad and yeah. you were back here trying to work out how to regroup. Was it the regrouping that did it? I think so because we, we actually realised what our plan was and I think that when you see all those troops running towards you, you tend to panic and you move people around too quickly and I think what we, what we realise is that our guys are good if they stay in their little groups and we let these guys come towards us one by one by one. How do you think you performed as a team? Um, a bit disjointed. I, yeah, yeah, I thought you and I did quite well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well I was happy that, that out of out of over about 800 troops, I saved seven. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's see what our historians yeah. thought of how you did. Let's oh. get Eric and Mike down here. They've been watching your every move. They are experts. There's nothing they don't know. Gentlemen. How did they do? Well, they won. Which well, they won, that's, which is really the most important bit. And they really won quite creditably. They didn't do it the same as Caesar. And they probably lost more men than Caesar. But, that, I mean, the first bit, the important bit, was that intelligence gathering. And they were very systematic about that, which is good. Mm. They, you know, they really, they, 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 and then they assessed the terrain, and they knew terrain was important, but they didn't quite use it right, did they? No, but I can't hold that against them. They grasped the importance of the slope. You guys knew that that slope was important. You didn't know exactly why it was important. You tried to use it for flank protection. You tried to protect your, your left flank with the slope. But what did you think the archers were going to do there? Well, we had this idea of uh, drawing the Gauls in. And how were you going to draw them in? Um, so by using the infantry as, as, as bait, as, as I guess. Bait. So again, you, you, you latched onto exactly the right principle. You yeah. guys actually managed to get your hooks into the Helvetii, who could have just run off into the woods and lived to fight another day. You drew them in with your skirmishers. There's a, a little bit of time there when I thought that your guys were going to be drawn in and that all of your skirmishers were going to go down and get massacred somewhere else. But you didn't do that. They got massacred where they needed to be massacred and that's fine. You use them effectively from a tactical point of view in order to drag the Helvetii main body up the hill and into the teeth of your legions. You needed to engage them. You needed to slaughter as many Helvetii as you could get your hands on. How did you do it? You got them up to attack you. And you held a good reserve. 
Mm. I mean, that was deliberate, wasn't it? You hadn't just yeah. forgotten yeah. about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did, so you didn't know you had them. That's good. So, I mean, you did hold that really important reserve. Because yeah. what was important, wasn't it, was these guys in the woods who came out yeah, we late to the party. Fresh. They didn't know they were there. No, but you did find them halfway through. But you found them, yeah, but Caesar didn't. Yeah? So you had you had the edge on him there. Talking of Caesar, how did he do? Caesar has got four legions that he trusts. And he takes those four legions and he parks them on the slope, up the slope. He's got two legions that he's recently recruited in, in northern Italy. He doesn't trust them. For all he knows, they'll break and run away. He holds them back further up the hill. They're visually impressive. As you guys saw when you very cleverly went round to the Gaul side of the field, you see that big mass of people up the hill. That's what these guys were going to do. They were going to stand up at the top of the hill and look scary. And then out to his front, he scatters his skirmishers, he's got archers, he's got cavalry, he's got all kinds of nonsense up there. And their job is to, first of all, let these guys get into formation, because it takes them a long time to get everybody all lined up and standing in the right place. And second, just as you guys did, Caesar wants to get his hooks into those Helvetii and pull them up the hill, where these guys can do the job of slaughtering them. And being brave warriors in a hero culture, we can't resist that. So, yeah, we're pushing on up. Heavy with cavalry. The Gauls were massive on cavalry. They were a big equestrian culture. So they're getting in there and they're, and they're mixing it. We have the numbers. So at this stage, they can afford to lose. So, yeah, we, we maybe lose half our cavalry. But we're in there. Once these guys have fallen away, once the Roman light troops are no longer involved, and once the Helvetii are enough of a distance up the hill, then the Roman main body, those four seasoned legions that Caesar has brought with him, can start engaging the Helvetii and can start pushing the Helvetii back towards the Helvetii's uh, own supply base, towards their own wives and kids, and away from the hill. However, by the time they get down to here, and they really wait until they get right down here. This is where these guys come in. They're not strictly speaking Helvetii, but they're allies. The Boi and the Tulingi, allied tribes who, who came late to the party, a bit like Blue Curret, Waterloo. But they came, and they came in time. And they sweep round, performing a flanking movement here. But what Rome can do, because of the nature of cohorts, is it can turn to take them on more than one flank. You guys were very concerned about your flanks. Caesar was not as worried about his flanks because Caesar knew that a Roman cohort could just turn at right angles because of its tremendous depth and its tremendous flexibility. Caesar was able to fight in two directions at once. He was able to fight the Helvetian main body to his front and the additional Gauls who came late to the battle on his right. So this lot are pushed and chased from the field this lot are hemmed in and absolutely slaughtered here. In the real Battle of Bibract, Caesar claimed that only one third of the Gallic army survived. Caesar had shown skills that would become his trademark. Coolness in the face of crisis and tactical genius. He would go on to use both these qualities to defeat Rome's enemies and to become one of the greatest figures in the whole of Roman history. Well, congratulations once again. You're winners. But on this program, everyone goes home empty-handed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done. Well done. The world's most ambitious survey, the story of mapping Everest, on BBC4 now.